<laughs> Are we live yet? <laughs> we are. Oh, oh, hello, everyone. We're live. We're we're ready now. <laughs> we're ready to go. Welcome, welcome, everyone. So I want to welcome you to the artist talks um, in conjunction with the exhibition uh, "Nati Roro Naki Tiroro." with your basket in my basket at the Arts Literature Laboratory. It's gonna be up from February 15th through April 2nd, 2022. Uh, the exhibition reception will be next Friday, March 18th, uh, 2022 at six to nine. And it's gonna be at the Arts Literature Laboratory. And so we're very excited and proud to, to be um, a part of this exhibition and putting this panel discussion together. Uh, Arts Literature Laboratory is a, commu a community-based contemporary art center supporting uh, contemporary arts, uh, art center supporting the visual and literary arts, music and performance in youth and adult arts education in Madison, Wisconsin. So I want to thank them in their participation in the SGCI conference. And so this is going to be an incredible conference next week. And this is the kickoff to the conference right here with, with our guests. Uh, before we introduce the, or before I introduce the guests, I'd like to begin with and open up with a space, the space with a land acknowledge, acknowledgement to honor and recognize the land uh, this exhibition is on in Madison, Wisconsin, and give honor to the Ho-Chunk Nation, along with the 11 other First Nations of Wisconsin, and give honor to our indigenous guests from Otorora. Um, the University of Wisconsin-Madison and Madison occupies the ancestral Ho-Chunk land, a place their nation has called De Jope since time immemorial. In 1832 treaty, the Ho-Chunk were forced to cede this territory. Decades of ethnic cleansing following, followed when both the federal and state government repeatedly but unsuccessfully sought to forcibly remove the Ho-Chunk from Wisconsin. This history of colonization informs our shared future of collaboration and innovation. So today, UW-Madison respects the inherent sovereignty of the Ho-Chunk Nation, along with the 11 other First Nations of Wisconsin. So I'd like to first introduce the artists uh, with a brief bio, and then we'll go into short presentation of their works. And I'll start with, uh, I was just gonna go through the artists uh, list first here. Uh, the internationally uh, exhibiting artist Marwan Bugay, who's with us today, um, examines the issues of cultural identity through the intersection of, of American Indian and popular cultures. His ongoing research investigates the technical processes related to printmaking and construct construction of mixed media art. The next artist that will speak with us is Vanessa uh, Edwards is a Maori printmaker and graduate of Taupu Kwe School of Fine Arts. Uh, Edwards has been making and exhibiting through New Zealand and beyond ever since. And in 2005, she attended T uh, Timata uh, Internationally Indigenous Artists Gathering in New Zealand, where she met me as well as uh, Melanie Yazi. And was then, at that time, she was challenged to identify and unite Maori printmakers. And the result, um, pa Pakata, uh, Pakata Maori Print Collective was established in 2006. The next artist to speak will be Alexis Neal, who's a graduate from the Auckland University Ellum School of Fine Arts with a Bachelor's of Fine Arts at, and Postgraduate Diploma in 1997 and completed a Master's Degree in Fine Arts Media at the University of London Slade School of Fine Arts in 2000. Alongside her art practice, Alexis has held tutorial positions in both academic and community institutions, working with the wider community. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, Gabriel Belts, who I, is a printmaker, painter, and designer. And I first met in, in New Zealand in 2005, and as she's currently a member and, and former chair of Tia Tinga Contemporary Maori Visual Arts Committee and a founding member of the Maori Women's Collective Kowa, Kowa and a founding member of Toy Pakata uh, Maori Print Collective. Uh, Belts, Bell's works draws on the history of printmaking in Otorora, New Zealand, and early Maori engagement with paper and the written word. 
And so uh, if you want to share your screen and or you want to introduce yourself and, um, and, and greet us. Thank you. Gabrielle, turn it to you. Uh, kia ora, John. Tēnā koe. Ko Gabriel Bells, ahau, no te ate awa me ngā pohi taku iwi. Um, e me atu ki a koutou e ngā tangata hauchank, um, from our mountains to your mountains, Tēnā koe, from our rivers and our sacred pools, our puna tapu, to your sacred waters, we greet you. Um, from our forests to our nui o tāne, to your mighty forests, we greet you. From te moana nui a kiwa, ki tūto mama, we greet you to all your people, to all your indigenous people of the Turtle Mama. We from Aotearoa, New Zealand, greet you. Ngā mihi atu kia koutou. Um, I had written down some some notes, but I think I might just go by by fly. So if I talk too much or I go off the track, please give me a nudge. <laughs> or, or stop me. <laughs> Back in 1995 uh, was when we first met, or Tiatinga had um, held a a symposium, an Indigenous Wananga, for visual arts, contemporary visual arts, at Upper Moana in Rotorua, and it was there that the young Melanie Yazi um, was invited to come down. And along with Melanie, there were people like Joe David, um, Harry Fonseca, Lillian Pitt, um, and a lot of other um, artists that I'm sure that you will recognize. Um, it was with great sorrow that we learned of Harry and um, Rick Bartow's passing um, in recent years. So, you know, all those um, people that have been part of those connections that we've made um, over several years have helped to, to build and to inform what we do as Māori printmakers. Um, previously in New Zealand, printmaking had um, a pretty low profile and connecting with some of the printmakers from, from the States allowed many of our other senior artists to realize um, the, the purpose and the place that printmaking can have within an indigenous culture. And if we go back in early times, our people, particularly those from, from the far north and down into the Waikato, um, could see the, the purpose of print and the fact that it's another way, because we're an oral people, you know, to have print was another way of eyeballing, if you like, um, by being able to put your message out there. Um, so some of the, the more... Um, Contemporary artists that have been involved in print have been people like um, um, Ralph Hoteri, um, Derek Lardelli in his early days, um, and various others. But um, it was really through the connection that we had through those symposiums that has um, help to grow our own particular style. So um, back in the 80s, through Ngāpuna Waihanga, which was a, um, an organisation that was set up by Māori artists, for Māori artists, um, there were people like Marilyn Webb 
who bought the idea of, of print um, to be used as a, as a contemporary art form. And it, um, during that time, I also uh, began to make prints because I came from a painting background. But the, the printmaking, I found it was a, a way of being conscious of um, how many of our taonga had been gifted and gone overseas or taken and gone overseas and were lost to us. And to me, the idea of print and having being able to have multiple images, even if you made the slight variation in those images so that they become very personal to, to each person that handled them, um, it meant that you could tell your story and repeat your story and share that mana of that story um, more often. So while you gave, you were also able to retain a copy for the future. And it was uh, some of those ideas that drove me to um, to continue on with, with printmaking and to hopefully give it some recognition within that arena. And so people like um, Colleen Ehrlich, who was also one of the leaders, senior artists within Te Atinga, um, kind of took me under her wing and I, I got stuck with every time we had a, a gathering, it was, you do the print. <laughs> so you organise the print. <laughs> so it was with a lot of glee that um, I met you, John, and um, that you shared your, your invitation with Mike Samuels and with Vanessa Edwards so that um, they could go over and they could see the, um, the variety and the extent that print had um, on a, in a much wider community than what we have here in, in Aotearoa. So ngā mihi atu ki ngā printmakers no Turtle Mama. Um, and it was not long after that that, um, so we had Melanie who had already started to do print exchanges. Um, her and I had made exchanges with our, our, our students. And um, so that sort of let each of us see what the others were doing. And uh, then we met people like Lindley, like um, like yourself, um, people like uh, Jake Jake Meadows. Oh, and, Jacob Meadows, yeah, yeah. And a lot of those connections were made thanks to to Melanie. So um, I really want to recognise and acknowledge the work that she's done. Uh, Joe Ferdison was another artist, another printmaker, who came down and um, was invited down during some of the Māori markets that we had, and he also shared some of his um, knowledge and his learning with us. So um, from, from those beginnings, um, Te Atinga finally managed to agree to hold a glass and print wānanga for Māori artists. And it was um, at that particular hui that Vanessa and Mike, were, who were students at the time, um, came into that, that grouping. And it was uh, planned at that hui that there would be um, that a collective would be established. And there were a few people who were very keen to do that, but it sort of fizzled. And um, so we just kept on making prints and, and kept on sharing what we were doing. And then after, after that visit to the States is when um, the Toi Whakata collective actually became established. Um, from that, we've run several wānanga. 
Um, we've had gatherings, we've had exhibitions, and it's um, it's been a way of of bringing our artists together because in the past um, we've we're such a long stretch of land. You know, we're two small or well, three small islands with a few outliers, and um, from deep in the south to to far in the north, um, that's where our printmakers are spread out. And we're, there's not a lot of us, but it's growing. And um, having having that collective to be able to uh, bring us together has given strength to the group and has has helped focus where where we see ourselves within that whole arena of of Māori, Māori art, contemporary Māori art. Do you want to one of those things? And um, so I just want to show you some photos um, of a more recent exhibition um, gathering that we had. So from visuals are going. Sound went out. Sound went out. Vanessa, you're Gabrielle. Can you hear us now? We can hear you, but we couldn't hear you when you put the slides on. Okay, got it. I'll try again. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no problem. We'll get it going. We'll get it going. Here we go. Let's see. I think we can hear you. We're not hearing you. We're only just seeing the slides. Sounds not working. Sounds not working. Sorry, we're a little technical. Needs to unmute the, uh, need to unmute Vanessa, the computer. Sounds like our, our sound has dropped right out. Hi. Yeah, the sound, the sound works, but when you go to show slides, it's working. Okay, it's working now. You're good. You're good to go. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I think we'll probably finish there then because the slides were kind of going to be the last part of, of what I was going to talk about and I was going to talk to the slides. So... Um, I just want to acknowledge everyone that's um, there and that has uh, come together to put this exhibition together um, and the artists that are involved in it. So, ngā mihi, ngā mihi atu, kia koutou. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. So we're gonna have uh, Alexis, um, Neil, um, do you wanna do slides or you wanna uh, greet us? And Alex, I wanna introduce you to Alexis. Uh, kia ora. Uh, so what I might do is I'll introduce myself and I'll just talk a little bit uh, about my practice and then if we have the same problem then I'll just get Vanessa to show the slides but I won't speak as we just slowly go through the images and then we'll come back to our group shot and I can then maybe just, you know, if there are questions we'll just pull them out because we may have the same uh, muting an image problem. Um, kia ora. Ko tuku maru tuku waka tupuna. Ko wai tohi tuku awa tapu. Ko piri piri tuku maunga tapu. Ko wai kawa tuku marae tupuna. Ko nati awa me te ati awa uku iwi. Ko Lexus Neil tuku ingoa. I tipuaki o i tamaki makoto, ko farihine taku kainga e kaipara. 
Kia ora koutou, kia ora koutou, kia ora koutou katoa. I'd just like to say I feel really privileged to be part of this print conference and the exhibition. Um, so thank you for the opportunity. It, um, it is a really uh, uh, lovely achievement, I think, um, within my career. I started out um, as a young student, and um, if I look back and reflect on my practice, I guess my grandfather, who was a uh, very important figure in my life and still is, um, planted a seed or a curiosity of exploring uh, my sense of identity through the duality of artifacts. And that is a continual theme, I think, that um, continues in my work. It has been a way to explore my sense of identity um, and has kind of acted like a portal to the past, but to be able to uh, create new narratives within a contemporary context. The backbone of my practice is print, and I say that really passionately. Uh, it informs everything else that I am interested in and what I make. Uh, so after I finished my master's degree, um, my work became quite mixed media. It was really important that printmaking was still um, very much a part of that uh, framework. So often uh, when I was creating bodies of work or installational work, uh, print still had a really important part in that. Um, and I suppose I was using that as a narrative tool to help tell a story when I was creating these environments. I have always had an interest in weaving and I was very, very lucky many, many years ago. Um, I was taught some really basic skills from some very close friends. And then it was made very clear to me that I was then to go and um, research and discover and to teach myself and to upskill certain aspects um, of that learning. And so that's become a really beautiful component um, to my practice. So I've been able to marry printmaking and raranga whakairo, uh, patterned weaving together. Um, that was one of those kind of light, light um, bulb moments, I suppose, in my studio when I was able to marry printmaking and the weaving component together to create woven whāriki or mats. Um, so the works that I've chosen for the show, for the conference, came from a bigger body of work called Something to Remember. And that was a body of work that I completed in 2018. And I was closely looking at the work of Louise Bourgeois. Uh, she was an artist who I was very aware of as a student, but when I looked at her work, I didn't know how to incorporate her as an artist model um, at that young age. And it was only until I was in my 40s that I, was, I went back to look at a lovely collection of her artist books. And I immediately realized how I could tell my own story um, in a similar format. Um, and one of the books that I was looking at was called Nothing to Remember. And I looked through that book and it really, um, it really struck a chord and I looked at it and thought it's well overdue that I need to make a printed handmade book and that's where something to remember came. I started looking back and reflecting on my practice and my childhood and where my sense of identity once lived and I realised that it was in the spare bedroom of my grandparents house. In the spare bedroom was where my grandmother kept all her special, special things, me being one of them, I suppose. It was the materiality of that room, the beautiful, heavy, blood red, gold paisley curtains that hung in the window in winter, the beautiful duvets that covered the single beds. And my grandmother was a cake decorator, and so all her beautiful fondant roses dried on those single beds. So the imagery of these fusion flowers uh, started to emerge. I started looking at the material quality of the, the uh, what made up that room. 
and the wallpaper of that period of time. Um, it was a paisley gold um, also. And I started looking at how I could integrate those ideas into the making of a new body of work and how our sense of identity can shift and change. The story's still there, but the aesthetics of it can, can look differently and or um, have a new face. And uh, so I started creating these sort of fusion flowers. My grandparents were proud gardeners and my, um, my grandmother particularly had this favorite banana tree and at particular times, the banana tree has this beautiful flower that kind of blooms and then falls away. And, uh, and my grandfather, he planted a lot of native plants on, on his property in particular places. So Harakeke, our native flat, flax, would have been uh, planted on the ends of banks where a lot of drainage would uh, drain to the plant. So I started using a lot of imagery that was used as a metaphor to talk about my grandparents and the role that they had bringing me up. The work also talked about my education and the struggles I had academically and how art and printmaking has become a visual voice uh, for my practice. So the, the images that I've chosen um, support what I have just uh, quoted all to you. Um, and uh, the original installation of that body of work. So um, what's really nice about the work that I've chosen for the conference show, um, that every time that work gets shown, it gets recontextualized or shown in a different way, uh, which is really beautiful because it just kind of evolves. Uh, next to that, the sculptural pieces, which were very playful, they were based on a playground. So you have the swing, Stairway to Heaven was based on the ladder of climbing in a playground. And then you have the bed of roses based on the slide. Um, so it talked about that childhood learning and play. Something that I guess we don't do as adults, we don't play enough in our practice. And I know I kind of have this preconceived idea and then there has to be a product at the other end. So, um, yeah, we'll, we, we might try and go through the images now. I won't try and speak to them, and, but I'll, uh, I'll finish up um, after they've been shown. Thank you, thank you. It was so uh, the the beautiful uh, printed book, uh, due to the format of that of that handmade book, uh, there is a there is the larger collection of images that you saw in the install shots um, printed and supported with essays um, in that. So it was a really nice way to kind of bring the sculptural works and the bound book to show you the bigger collection of work that came from that series. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. That, that, that was really amazing to see, like you said, recontextualize and seeing the installation and in, uh, different formats and like from installing it. But we can talk about that in a second. So I'm going to um, uh, introduce uh, uh, Vanessa Edwards and do you want to uh, talk about your work now and then we'll have some questions we'll have Marwan and then we'll have some questions. Uh, kia ora, um, kia ora koutou katoa e huhu mai ki te kaupuku te kaupapa. Um, we're just acknowledging everyone who is here online today um, supporting us in this kōrero, this talk. Um, it is a great privilege to be here. So I'll just introduce myself, um, ko tongarero te maunga, 
ko taupo te moana, ko te aroa te waka, ko te hiuhiu te tangata, ko tuwhare toa te iwi, ko paukura te marae, uh, ko Marco Berga tuku rangatira, ko Ngākuru Reynolds tuku tumaiti, ko Vanessa Waira te Edwards tuku ingoa. Nā mihi, nā mihi. He mihi atu ki te uh, mana whinua, te iwi o te hauchak, uh, he tino nui te mihi atu ki a koutou, me nā iwi katoa o te rohe, te nā koutou katoa. Just acknowledging everybody there this evening and also my connection to our whenua here in Aotearoa, um, at my mountain, my lake and my tribe as well, um, from whenua ki te whenua, I suppose, from one land to another, as Gabrielle also acknowledged earlier today. It is absolutely a, a great pleasure to be here and a really great honour um, for myself particularly to, to return to Wisconsin after so many years. As mentioned earlier, I met John um, at Te Mata International Indigenous Print um, Gathering in 2005, and Melanie Yazi as well. And I was such a green student at that time that um, I had no idea what I was really getting myself into, but was um, enthralled as soon as we got there to see all of these printmakers from other countries um, just really into print. As Gabe's mentioned, it hadn't really been acknowledged at that stage. And so to see it happening was amazing. And then to be invited to the previous um, Southern Graphics Conference in Wisconsin in 2006, so many years ago, um, and to travel over there as such a young person and such a young printmaker, so naive in the uh, the strength of printmaking, the power of printmaking, to go over there where our eyes were just opened wide. And, me and for me and Mike, we just our eyes were like big saucers the entire time we were there. So um, I'd like to acknowledge John and Melanie, who both hosted us so beautifully throughout that time. Um, coming into this project, it was a time to reflect on that time and how far I've come since then and how far we have come as a collective. Not only because of that, but that meeting with you and that trip there certainly was a catalyst to push us along. And so I acknowledge that. Um, a great opportunity to send some work over and, sh and show it there with you. Um, the work that you see in the show for me is um, called, it refers to a concept of social amnesia. And in the Māori terms, I refer to that as he tonga tonu te ware ware. Forgetfulness should be reckoned with always. And so this body of work is actually a, my postgraduate diploma going into my Masters of Māori Visual Art. And I hadn't studied for quite some time as I'm a secondary school teacher and um, took a year off to engage in my studies. So it was a dipping my toe back into research. So I wanted to start with um, the introduction of the printing press to New Zealand, to Aotearoa, and its effect on Māori at that time. So if you can imagine, the first printing press was actually a letter press um, at the top of the North Island in Kororareka. Um, the first printing presses came over in that area. And of course they came with the missionaries and all that they brought as well. So delving into that history, I realized um, there was massive gaps in my knowledge of New Zealand history and that um, I knew certain parts of it, but hadn't really delved into the full timeline. And following printmaking enabled me to do that. Um, and we had, we have shown up in Kororareka before, up in Russell, um, and there's a house there called Pompelia House. And it was also one of the places to have one of the first printing presses um, there as well. So, after that point, I, I delved into history 
My family is also Catholic. So I am one of those Māori families who were, yes, very staunch Māori and staunch iwi, but totally took on board Catholicism. So for me growing up and coming <clears throat> into my grandparents' home and all of a sudden having to go to uh, church every Sunday, and yet they were fluent speakers and were also very dedicated to their people and their iwi. Um, as I got older, I questioned where was where's the balance there? Um, and my nana actually said, God before iwi was her, was her thinking. And that always uh, troubled me somewhat. So when I delved into this research, um, I started to unravel, much like Alexis, I guess, memories of growing up. Why did we go to church? Why did Māori take on Catholicism so much? Why did they give away so much of their own practices in place of um, to enable uh, religion to come in? And one of those things, of course, was the printing press arriving and what they were printing was the Bible. Um, and they were printing it in te reo, in Māori, as they would have done uh, where you are and all over the world. So in translating the Bible from English into Māori, there was no Māori written language. So we first had to come up with an alphabet, um, which is its own story altogether. But consequently, we came up with 16 characters and the Māori or the classic Māori language was um, created and it was printed. Um, and there were several effects that occurred after that. One of the interesting ones being Māori were very keen to learn how to read. And so some would say they took on religion so that they could learn to read. Mm. And if you think about technology today, reading was a technology. It was a code that they could learn to share messages, to share um, stories or information. So for them, it was a sense of we, we must learn this new technology. And they were actually quite successful in doing so. And at one point, there were more literate Māori in New Zealand than there were settlers. Um, so it was quite an interesting history there. But throughout that uh, year of study, I gained so much knowledge and realised along the way that there was still so much to explore. The show that you see before you is probably just um, scratching the surface of or indicating many more departure points to come. Um, the little perspex pieces, sculptural pieces that we spoke about, John, um, that Adriana put together so beautifully, uh, talks about, um, we call that the waha or the mouth, as the waha. And those are my um, waha sculptures. And usually they would be paired with a 2D print on the wall, also of a, a shadow waha. And it talks about the idea of conversation and discussion and the sharing of histories and the sharing of narratives and who's sharing the history and why. Um, and that we must be critical of the histories that we're reading and that we, we are consuming. Um, I. We must be um, critical of those histories that we're consuming and always ask the question, who is uh, giving us these histories and for what purpose? Mm -hmm. And it is also a point across the world, I think, for Indigenous where we're starting to take control mm -hmm. of, the, of our own narratives. And as Indigenous printmakers, we endeavour to do that through our artwork. Um, whether it be a very personal narrative or whether it be a very national or even international discussion. So those small um, sculptural pieces also have little tiny lead letter press that come from an actual printing uh, press. And on one of them, it, there's just a whole bunch of letter press type piled up on top of the tongue. And on the other one, the, press, the letter type has been melted down and melted over the tongue in terms of um, consuming, 
ideas and regurgitating, I suppose, concepts. Uh, the prints on the wall are, um, I would say, a mashup of iconography that I came across and ideas that kind of talk to the things I've just spoken about, religion, um, the use of visual, visual icons, um, the translation of one language into another. Um, and on each end, you'll see one of the 2D waha pieces there, just starting the kōrero and finishing the kōrero. So that's what that work is about. And it's, again, I'll just reiterate, it's a great pleasure um, to be there. And if anyone has any further questions about that, I'll be welcome to answer them. Kia ora. Kia ho, thank you, Vanessa. All right, I'm going to introduce, um, we've got Marwan next. And Byron, do you want to share slides or how do you want to do it? Yeah, I'm going to share some slides. Okay, go for it. Okay. Um, first of all, I had la Kwasin, Shayai, Deshitni, Snesit, Najini, Basichin, Totohni, Dasiche, the Bethlehem, A, Dasinan, Ashi, Denen, Hastin, Sne, Shayai, Marwin, Bigay, Yenisia. Hello and um, greetings um, to our guest from from uh, from New Zealand, and um, and I thank them and acknowledge them for uh, participating in in, the, in this exhibition. And I thank you, John, my brother, for for uh, moderating this, and all the people who are involved in 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 organizing the conferences and um, ju and just giving us this uh, platform to. Um, to express ourselves, um, and so um, anyway, this this um, this exhibition is um, um, it was probably like ten years in the making, um, and it was um, me kind of noodling. Like every time I, I've gone down to uh, one of those gatherings or been been invited to one of those gatherings, it's just kind of dropping um, words and. And I knew that um, SUC always happened every year, and it was me just kind of noodling um, the uh, printmakers down there, and um, just seeing the just the awesome work that that they were doing down there, and just really trying to give them uh, an, an opportunity to uh, to share w with a larger audience. Um, and so, um, so we we just slowly kind of started talking about it, and. Um, and it and this year it, it, it kind of came came um, came to a, a, a realization that um, it, it's going to happen and it, it and it's happening now and so and I also acknowledge uh, Melanie Yazi for uh, recommended me as uh, 25 years ago to go down and kind of see. Um, See the emerging artists, or 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 participating in in one of these um, artist gatherings with the emerging artists. Um, at that point, um, and it and it just kind of um, it just kicked down the doors for me um, um, in in a lot of different ways. And so, and and as I kind of traveled down there, um, I, I would just keep um, keep my Ears um, big, I guess, um, for all the conversation and all the cultural exchange that was happening. Watch what was happening, um, and 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 really just just kind of take it in. And um, in and while I was down there, um, or or every time I go down there, there's there's these different opportunities to to collaborate and um, and and some of. Some of our discussions were um, the same conversations that, that we're having with in, with indigenous artists up here, um, and, and so you know there there wasn't any um, there was a translation that was happening that was kind of awesome, um, and you know and and just different forms of of kind of sharing, um, and so. Um, 
anyway, uh, I'm gonna share my screen for to um, kind of talk about my work. Um, let me get back to this. Um, as I said earlier, um, um, this first slide is just my name, and I'm I'm Navajo, and I grew up in uh, New Mexico and Arizona, and but I currently live in in uh, um, in um, Oklahoma, and um, and I and I'm married into the uh, the, uh, Chick the Chickasaw Nation, um, so I'm a captive of of my wife's tribe, and so. Uh, <laughs> Um, so, um, this is just a typical scene and, and a lot of my work is, is informed about, um, with, uh, landscape and it's informed with, with place where, where I grew up, um, and all the cultural, uh, uh, philosophies, the, the, uh, methodologies, um, and, and cultural memory, um, and and language and 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 how all of those are 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 a one entity um and you know going back and forth down to uh new zealand um th there were a lot of weavers and 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 growing up with with a weaver um uh my grandmother was a weaver and um just kind of understanding that 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 whole ethos um i really connected with um with with some of the weavers down there, um, and 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 what they were doing using uh, uh, material, using some of the the um, same same design elements within their their um, w within their art as well. Um, so I, I started kind of bringing that the, the idea of textiles design into into my work as um, into uh, woodblock. And and I started kind of um, also started reflecting on the the spaces that that we share as 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 human beings um, with the birds and with with the animals and the insects and all of that. And so I, I started wanting to to acknowledge them with, within um, these uh, these wood blocks. Um, these these wood blocks are uh, 24 by uh, 49 inches. Um, so, um, so you know, just just kind of bringing some of those elements in into the work um, really um, helped me to to remember songs, helped me to remember stories, um, helped me to remember our our uh, Genesis stories as, as well, and then so that I can pass it on to um, to my family members as well, um, and. Um, 2019, I, I did a collaboration um, with uh, with another artist. Um, she is from um, Oklahoma. She uh, her name is uh, Maggie Boyette. Um, she's a contemporary dancer. Um, she is Shawnee and in Kiowa, and 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 this project we were awarded a a, a big grant. Um, and it took a, a year to kind of bring this together. And, and that project also was, um, took about five years in the making. And, and we would see each other um, at, at a different places and we were just kind of talk. And, and I, I wanted to sort of include her, her movement um, and, and, and her, um, her choreography in some way to, um, to uh, do this project, um, and so we uh, came up with this project, um, and and this is a 15-foot uh, 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 diameter um, a wood block. And I, I'm sorry to my uh, my relatives down under. I don't know the translation of feet to uh, meters. It's big, um, and so. <laughs> <laughs> those um these these panels that, is, that are hanging these uh the the uh, mirror type panels that you see are um eight feet long 
so um so you know j just really bringing kind of elements from um from from the culture and and kind of re redesigning um in this piece i'm, I'm redesigned i've redesigned like a a, a basket a, a a navajo basket and, and i'm using as, as that basket as as a form of um, uh, communicating with with the cosmology on on the sides with the stars with the eagles and there's um, th there are flicker feathers um, and um, this represents the uh, sun and I also did one for the moon um, and really kind of thinking about the uh, the uh, duality of 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 who we are of of male and female and 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 with this project we we really um tried to in include um um her uh maggie's traditional philosophies and also the the navajo philosophies as well and 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 we just kind of blended them in um here um you know she uh she uh we uh Printed the outfit, and and we really wanted to think about um, how how to include those dualities, and so we uh, um, we printed this outfit for her um, with the, with the sun and the moon um, as, as she moved around on the on the on the dance floor. So um, so as, as she's dancing across the platform, she's also printing um, printing the uh, wood block that that you see in the back um and and that was a form of kind of our our um our form of a of a land acknowledgement to the um to the tw to, to the 39 tribes here in in oklahoma um and um and i tried to to use a, a lot of their design elements within this uh, wood block as well and so um on on the 18th, we're going to have a, a live uh, a live performance as well, and um, we're going to use um, uh, s some dancers and and some singers um, from um, from the uh, Madison area to to do our uh, um, land acknowledgement as well. And mm. so these these uh, mirrored pieces that that you see. Um, they are, um, a, and, and, and this piece is called um, fragmentation. And, and we both felt like um, that the idea of fragmentation of being, um, of being displaced from our, our traditional homes and, and we have to relearn how to read the stars from, from where we're at. And mm -hmm. we have to try to stay connected to culture as well. Um, and so, so everything gets, gets gets fragmented and 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 that's why these 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 things kind of hang and, and, it, and it really skews the view of the uh, ceremonies that that is happening within the uh, circle um and so um at at the at the performance um I, i'm going to ink up the um the uh, wood blocks um and as you see me here kind of rolling up the the uh, four foot by four foot um, um, blocks, um, and and here um, we're kind of placing them down on the on the ground. And there's my crew, my uh, volunteer crew, or I should say my voluntol crew, because they're my students, and I told them to do it um, to to kind of oh, get cool. the experience of kind of working big and 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 printing live as well. So, um, and here is the uh, finished piece. Um, after she danced on on the surface of it, and so at at the opening on March 18th, we're hoping to uh, to uh, recreate this, um, and and these are just some installation shots of how big that that print is um, as we're as we're hanging it. Wow, that's amazing! That the 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 exhibition is incredible. Uh, from um, Adriana and I spent several days installing it and helping you too, Marwan, when you came up to install. And uh, I, I have a question. So thank you everyone for presenting and uh, for the presentations. And um, 
The question is for both, uh, for Alexis and uh, Vanessa, um, how do you determine a book form for your projects? Is book making to form or of meditation and reflection onto the body of work? Do you see the, the book as an art artifact? So let me repeat that, sorry. How do you determine a book form for your projects? Is bookmaking a form of meditation and reflection onto the body of work? Or do you see the book as an artifact? Sure, go first. Kia ora. Uh, I think, I suppose it is an artifact um, in its finished uh, embodiment. Uh, I think it was a really important part of the making of that work. As I was additioning the 30 by 40 prints, if it fitted into the format, the landscape format of the book that I had designed and could be supported with some of the text that runs through the book, um, then I printed each, each section as I'd additioned. So it became very much a part of the bigger body of work. Mm. It ended up being a very separate component of that. Uh, it was also supported with two very beautiful essays as well, uh, so that you could really look through that book and understand the whole kaupapa um, and narrative um, of what was being explored at that one time. Um, hmm. Yeah, it is an artifact. I mean, I suppose we're making contemporary artifacts. Yeah, I think for, thank you for that question, because that particular piece of work is a separate piece of work to my postgraduate diploma. and actually came of a show we did here as a larger collective of Māori artists from uh, Te Awa Tupua or the Whanganui River that I live by. Um, and um, so... That was my response to three years of research and gatherings by that particular group of people. And for me, it was the concept of duality. And we had a couple of scientists come to Whanganui and go up our sacred river. And there was a, what do you call it, where the river stops running? A dell? No, it was a... It's a part of the river where the river has changed um, course. course and has left a riverbed that used to be there. So um, we were fortunate to go up and there with these scientists who had, in fact, been asked to come and they had taken a core sample from that, uh, the old riverbed that dates back 2,000 years. So they'd gone eight metres or so deep and pulled out like a cylindrical core of uh, Papatunaku or our whenua, our land. And so we were asked or invited to come and be an Indigenous response to um, the that act and that space. And uh, they were there to research into flooding and how our earth had had come to be that way and how our land had shifted and moved. So it was a really amazing experience for us. As I developed my thinking around that duality of the scientific approach and then the emotional connection that Indigenous people have or narrative, I needed to create um, something that had two sides to it. So I thought a book and probably a book like this initially um, and that it kind of felt like an academic containment of information but by the end of it, it it turned into a concertina books and the shape of it actually encompasses the the shape of the old riverbed in, in a large circle so when it's placed in the space it actually acknowledges that sacred space and where the the box is is where the um, break happened and the and the river took its new course leaving behind this once what was once was kind of history so the imagery on that um talks about text on one side which is very simple just says awa 
and then it has a couple of waha mouths and awa, um, which means river. And then on the other side, it's just these really beautiful impressions of like fossil-like, gas-like, under the earth-like um, impressions that occurred. And so it um, quite beautifully intersects and crosses over and then intersects again. And then subsequently, uh, the duality of it sustains one another. So the book came after the thinking, if I can put it mm. that way. Mm. I can put it that way. So thank you. That was a beautiful description. But both, but thank you both. Um, I have a, a so I was um, the the idea of narrative, and you talk about indigenous people and how narrative is important. Uh, I I grew up, and a, a colleague, a, a Comanche scholar, uh, Dustin Tomakia, we would hear the word Madoa, and in Madoa, we'd always hear it at the beginning of a conversation, and we thought, I thought, and he did too, it meant hello, like hi, it's a greeting but it means to report or to tell a story. And it's the same in every culture. There's this words that we use. And it's it, to me, like Gabrielle, you talk about tell your story and repeat your story. Uh, Vanessa, your, your reading was a code to share messages or stories. And Alexis, recontextualizing my work in various venues. And then Marwan, remembering the song and stories and passing them, passing it down to family members. And, I th I'm taking notes because I'm like just making sense of cultural relationships and how that works in the continuation of culture. And that was another thought. And so I guess, how do we see the future of print and language and language within our own cultures coming together? That's a question for anyone from, from me because I'm thinking about it too. Because we all use printmaking and we are uh, coming from uh, these uh, uh, indigenous perspectives and then also language is becoming a very apparent and important and there's an ability to speak speak our truths and and it's an exciting time how do you see that in our in our work anybody i think the the really beautiful thing about this is that with art in general it, it kind of breaks down barriers you know like like there's you know if, 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 if we're using if we're talking about language there's you know there's there's a there's a language barrier um from from all the indigenous people um you know uh using their own language but you know as 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 visual storytellers that that kind of gives us a, a different vehicle to kind of express our uh, ideas that kind of um that um that is very common you know um i i think they're um they're you know w we approach it with with a narrative and and there's always a reference to to who we are um identity and i i think that um it, it it just really kind of serves as that for um uh for me it's um that that language and and kind of remembering and um that that repetitive kind of storytelling as, as well um so mm -hmm. uh, kia ora, kia ora Marwan, kia ora john um, I, I think it's quite interesting when you start talking about language. And it, it's it's interesting here because for um, a number of years, we've been working towards re-establishing and, and recognising te reo Māori um, within New Zealand. It's recognised as um, an official language along with sign language and English. In, in New Zealand, Aotearoa. Um, but the, the language changes because people change. So the language that, some of the, the language that I grew up with isn't, isn't the same language that people are speaking today uh, mm. because there's that, that change that happens. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's not it's not only a um, a dialect change it's it's a change through time and now mm. a lot of a lot of young people have gone to institutions 
to learn their lao mm. because there's been that hiatus where in, in the generation that I grew up with, that was when, when the language became broken. Mm. So mm. because our grandparents thought that it was important to speak English and to be fluent in English, they stopped they stopped the language. That didn't happen with everyone, but it ha happened in a lot of families mm. because they wanted their children to be able to go to school, to learn, to be able to, to be on, on the same level, I guess, as, and have the same opportunities as, as the other part of the population. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Within strong Māori communities, that language was retained within the home. Mm -hmm. But when they went out of the home, it was a, a different thing. So anyway, having had that, that hiatus, that break, um, now when young people want to, to learn the language, if they don't have it in their home, they go to the institutions to increase their knowledge, to build on their knowledge and all the time there is the new technology that's coming along where new words are created from old concepts. So Rorohiko, for instance, a computer becomes a lightning brain. So Roro is the brain and, and Hiko is the lightning. So, um, you know, it's sort of like looking at a new at new technology to create that's based back in, in other concepts. Whereas I think when when you look at language and if you if you have access to language, there's a whole range of layers of meaning within one word. You know? mm. So if you can um, put it into uh, into a visual form, then you multiply all those different kinds of understandings. And mm. for me, I think, you know, that's one of the, the treasures that we have with, with printing, with printmaking, that you can, you know, you, and it's like whakapapa. You know, we talk about the genealogy. Mm. And, and so there's layers, you know, as you come down through the layers, each one of us are made up of, all those generations behind us mm. and and a print is a little bit like that in in my thinking anyway mm. where you can layer different mm -hmm. layers on top of each other so that it increases the the bounty and the and the understanding and the meanings the behind yeah. you know behind an image um yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll just stop the otherwise I'll go no, I, fine. I, <laughs> well, with, with this with this project that um, the, the the installation, um, we were asked to try to convert our our um, our titles right to our yeah. our native tongue, and just yeah. to kind of mm. um, w w which was a it was a beautiful thing because I, you know, I was trying to get. Uh, you know um the uh, language the the idea of fragmentation right and so i i was calling like family members and i, I had like six people on online on uh, on the phone <laughs> and we were trying to like kind of like break down the idea of fragmentation and they were calling their um you know so pretty soon it was like 20 people and everyone's like texting each other and like no 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 that's that's not the correct word <laughs> I mean, this is correct. a word this is a word yeah and so um anyway so so my uncle was like you you, you artists are kind of funny because you guys talk a, 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 a sacred language and and you guys oh. are talking about ideas that are um that come from that are equal as to um to a, a medicine language right like oh. and 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 so finally i was told you need to go talk to a, a medicine person because this is their language and they're mm -hmm. gonna they're gonna have a word 
that describes exactly what you're talking about. And, and so, and, and, uh, and, and that was the first time I've, I've heard that is that, 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 that sacred language or that, that, uh, that uh, medicine language. And, and, and in all of our articles, there, there is that language kind of deep with, within like w w what, what uh, Gabe's was talking about is like that you, you just kind of keep digging deeper and deeper and deeper, um, which kind of comes to identity. It, it comes to who we are. And as, as printmakers, we love layers, right? We're, we're always putting layers down, whether they're very <laughs> subtle or whether they're really strong. And, and that's the beauty of, of using printmaking as, 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 as that vehicle, because you, you can put something so subtle in there that no one will see. But if you're ready for that information, you will see it and it'll stick out um, and, and, and go and, and, it, and it transla that translates to cultural knowledge as well. You know, there, there might be like we hear these stories all through our lives, but we, we don't see it and we don't listen to it. But then when we're ready for it, it, it just blossoms and it's, it, it just kind of takes over. So there's, there's, there's that connection as well, I, I think. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. Oh, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Both. Thank you both. That, that was awesome. That was great. Thank you. I, I do have a, another, um, uh, Emily Arthur is a professor here at UW. Uh, she wanted to, to give gratitude and an abundance dance is what she said. I'm just so grateful for their artworks in, in Madison and so happy to share the message and materials with our community that you're doing that. And we will continue to work to be uh, together and make prints at the same space and be together at the space to make prints together. So this is uh, one step to more. So it's exciting. Oh, Emily. Uh, Kia ora. So is there any other questions that we had in the, uh, I, I wanna thank you all. This was, uh, I, I mean, I started to tear up there when both of you were speaking cause it's just powerful. Thank you, you know, at the end here. And, and uh, I, I needed to hear those words from y'all and thank you. And thanks for, for having this conversation and Come see the work, those in Madison and coming to the SGCI conference at the Art Litz Laboratory. Um, it's a powerful exhibition and please come to see it. And I want to thank you all. Thank you very much. Yeah, there's, there's going to be singing and there's going to be dancing and there's going to be a, uh, a, a mariachi band coming in. It's going to be <laughs> happening. It's going to yeah. be a popping place. Yeah. Popping on oh, we yeah. we'll Friday. On March we'll 18th. March we'll 18th. Like this. No, we won't be dancing like that. But we'll be having our own party <laughs> over here as well. All right. All right. Shall we sign off? If we must. If we have to. Oh. No. Thank you, John. Lovely. Thank you, John, Thank for hosting. Thank you all for, for being incredible. And let's keep making those layers and telling those stories. Yeah. Making cheers. Kakite. Kakite. Kia ora. Bye. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora.